Hi, I'm Kat, and this tutorial is how to do these Cobra braid and chain bracelets. You've seen a lot of tutorials on the internet about these, but I do this a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to show you how to do one like this, so that you only have one loop on each end with the chain. And it's really nice and neat, you don't have any visible knots, you don't have a lot of slop from glue there. And there's a pretty thick cobra braid on this side. Um, now on these I also have clasps. I don't do the tutorial on how to do these, but if you wanted to buy some I have those on my Etsy shop. And um, yeah, that's about it. For this bracelet you're going to need scissors, some chain, scotch tape, or a clipboard, craft lace, and some pliers. Start by using your craft lace to measure exactly how big you need your bracelet to be in order for you to be able to slip it onto your hand. So basically what you want to do is measure the very widest part of your hand and check to make sure that you can still squeeze your hand through. And once you've figured out how big your entire bracelet's going to be, so about this much, you can double it over and use that to measure exactly how much chain you're going to need because your chain is going to make up about half of your bracelet. So I know I can take off these last four links. And to do that I'm just going to open up these pliers inside the first link that I'm not using. And you still have the measure of how big your bracelet's going to be. So you're going to need one and a half times this measurement. And this is going to be the base string that you're going to be weaving onto. So if that makes sense, this was the original measurement of how long the bracelet needs to be. So just add half of that and that all needs to be one piece. Now you're not actually going to cut this, but you're going to kind of fold it over into thirds so you can get a little bit of a crease and tell where the thirds of your bracelet end. Now on one of those third marks, you're going to thread one link of your chain onto that and have it rest right there about where the crease is. And then at the other end of your chain, you're going to have one of your other thirds. So that's how the Cobra braid attaches to this without having to tie any extra pieces on. So now that this is kind of folded over into thirds, you can see that that's exactly how it's going to attach to the chain so that you don't have to tie any extra pieces on there on either end. And that's basically the hardest part of that. So once you have that all lined up, tape down one of these ends. Or if you have a clipboard, you can always clip it into your clipboard, whatever is easiest for you. But I like to tape this down so the chain isn't moving around quite so much. Tape that down there. And that kind of gets everything in place and ready for you to start weaving. And next you'll need to cut 40 to 50 inches. That's right, 40 to 50 inches of your craft lace, and this is going to be your working lace. Once I've cut my working lace, it helps me to find the center of it, and then make a little bit of a crease there, so that I know exactly where I'm going to start working. So since you've already kind of put a crease in your working lace, you can line it up underneath your base laces and then just make a regular knot like you would when you're starting to tie your shoes. 
You try your best to get all three of your strings in the knot, but if you don't, that's fine. You can just pick it up when you do your first weave. Just like that. So you've got one lace that's kind of going up and one lace that's kind of going down. With the one that's going up, cross it over like that. Like a backwards P over your base laces. And then you put this lace on the other side underneath all three of your base laces. So I want you to see very closely how this is all working before I pull the first one tight. This lace you're going to be forming that first loop with and it's going over your base laces. It's making kind of like a backwards P and crossing over and then this other one is going to be going underneath all of the laces and up through the loop. And as it does that, this side of the lace is going to be on top coming out of the knot, then it's going to flip underneath, and the side that was on top is now on the bottom. Same thing with this side. This lace is kind of on the bottom, it flips over as it goes through, and now it's on top. And you have to pay attention to that, otherwise your bracelet's going to look really funky because your laces are just going to flip willy-nilly whichever way they please, and it's not going to be pretty. Now you're going to do the exact mirror image because this lace is going down here. So whenever you see this lace going down, you know that that's the side that you're going to loop next. So you do this loop. Remember this side of the lace is facing down coming out of the knot. It's going to flip over and now it's going to be on top here in the middle. Then on this side, that lace is just going to flip over, go underneath all of the base laces, all of them, and then up through the loop on this side. Oh, make sure your lace is turned the right way. So can you see that? Exact mirror image from the first one. This lace is coming out of the knot and this side comes up and ends up on top. And this one, this one's on top coming out and then it flips over and ends up on the bottom. Can you see what's happening there? All right, then pull that tight, but not too tight. Now, since this line is right here on this side, we know that we're gonna make the loop with this side next. So just cross it over, kind of make a backwards P. Make sure your lace is turning the correct direction. Then take the other one, underneath all of the base laces, and through. So you'll see it's exactly like doing the macrame bracelets, except you have a flat lace. So it's a little bit more complicated because you have to pay attention to which way the laces are flipping. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. It just looks completely different. And make sure you're not pulling them so tight that you're stretching lace because that's going to make your cobra braid skinnier and I think they look better when they're wider. And so on. Okay, so I've woven the whole length that I need to and I'm almost back to the chain on the other side. So to tie it off, I don't like tying a knot that shows on this side, and I don't like tying a knot on the inside that's going to scratch my wrist. So what I do is I feed each end of the lace back through that loop that my chain link is in. So on this side, it's going through the loop that way, and then on this side, it's going through the loop that way. Now once they're through, I'm basically tying a square knot. So 
like this. You can see how they're crossed over like that. This one's on the inside. I'm going to take it down and back up through that loop. So that's the first half of my square knot. And then you take the laces back through the loop again. Pull it pretty tight first. Take the lace back through the loop that way. And this one through the loop this way. And whichever one is on kind of the inside of the loop, you can see how this one's kind of sitting on top of this one. Take it down and through there. I mean, it's just a square knot, really, but because it's in such a tight space, it's kind of confusing to show you. So make sure you pull that really tight. Sometimes you can pull it tight enough that it'll just snap off, and that's fine, because you're gonna glue it. So sometimes you can get to snap off, or you can just cut it. Cut it really close so those ends aren't sticking out, because I don't like getting scratched by them. And now I'm just gonna go in and finish that knot off with a little dab of super glue. Now just a tip, this one comes out thinner than your finger. If you wanted your Cobra braid to be a lot thicker, what you could do is cut um, more, a little bit more than twice as much of the string to work with, and then when you get to one end, instead of tying it off, just turn around, tie a knot, and then turn around and keep weaving over what you've already woven. So I, it's a little bit difficult, but you get a braid that's, you know, like way out to here and it looks really good. It just takes more than twice as long. So usually this is fine with me. I think these are cute. Just like that. But if you did want a thicker one, you could, like I said, cut twice as much and just turn around and go back over it to make it thicker. But that's part of the reason you don't want to pull them too tight in the first place. You've already got three layers of the string in the middle here, which makes it a bit thicker, other than making it nice and tidy. Or you could just double up even more inside your bracelet, do two loops through here and then two loops through here, so you'd have, you know, six layers in the center and then weave over that. But, you know, it makes it really hard to start off and you have to tape it down a lot more and, yeah. So that's that. And from the outside, you can't even see that knot, and you don't have any of the jagged edges sticking out over here that are gonna scratch you. And there's your finished bracelet.